He is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. At this time of celebration of our Lord here on Easter Sunday, the highest day of the Christian year, where we remember that Jesus Christ rose from the, day, from the grave to give us everlasting life, we come together in worship of him. Although we are coming together online only, because this is a live streamed only service, because the indoor service, which we hoped to have had, uh, they had to be canceled because of orders by the government, because there was a rising number of coronavirus cases within the province and also a, a rising number of variants uh, in, inside the province. So we remain here online only. There will be a possibility of having outdoor services later on, but as of this time, we don't have them. Uh, if you would like outdoor services, please let me know. I'll be able to try and arrange that later on once the weather is a bit better outside and hopefully we can come together in person, distance and masked. Uh, as we come together today, um, I will also offer, which I forgot to put in the email yesterday which had the link to the service, if you would like to have uh, a celebration of the Lord's resurrection with the body and blood of Jesus Christ and the communion meal. I will be making myself available until 4.30 p.m. today for you to come in and celebrate the Lord's Supper here. So if you would like to do so, please let me know before you come over. Uh, that's just so that no one will step on each other's uh, toes as they come into the, into the building. And we can have a brief communion meal here at the church. So that's until 4.30 p.m. today. And as we come together in memory of the resurrection of our Lord, knowing that his resurrection lives within us, bringing us everlasting life, we mourn the loss of Ella Campbell. She will be in, uh, her family and friends will be included in our prayers this morning. She passed away Monday evening, 11.30 p.m., and our prayers go out to her family at this time. Our prayers mindful of Jesus Christ's resurrection, remembering his victory over sin and death, a hope given to Ella, and a hope that we have in the grand resurrection to come where we can see our sister in Christ once again. So, since we accidentally weren't streaming, let's have our opening hymn once again, Jesus Christ is risen today. <laughs>
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with the intro from Exodus chapter 15. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. You will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain, the place, O Lord, where you have made for your abode, the sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin 
by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading for Easter Sunday comes from the prophet Isaiah, the 25th chapter. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with Psalm 60. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those who run after another God shall multiply. The drink offerings of blood I will not pour out, or take their names on my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my heart. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad, and my whole being rejoices, my flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle reading comes from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, that is, Simon Peter, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Continue with the Alleluia and verse. Alleluia! Christ Thanks. Jesus abolished death and has brought life and immortality to life through the Gospel. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. 
When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. And they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to thee, thee, O Christ. We confess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who, who for our our salvation, our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us in the conscious power. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian at the Salt Church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Message for all the children out there and all those of you who are young at heart. We see here, like people did on Easter morning, an empty tomb. I know it doesn't seem terribly exciting, but this is actually the site of the greatest victory humankind has ever known and ever will know. The turning point of all history is here at the resurrection. But, I don't know, it seems a, a little empty. <laughs> Usually when we look at something heroic, some great victory. Well, I guess nowadays we tend to look more toward action heroes and superheroes, all people who are showing victory through their strength and skill and wits. So an empty tomb might not seem quite as exciting. I mean, we don't have a picture of Jesus Christ kicking down the two-ton stone slab in front of his tomb and walking out with dramatic music and explosions behind him. And if anybody did make that movie, it would be a horrible blasphemy. Jesus' resurrection is actually greater than any action movie scene or superhero movie scene, anything any of these heroes have ever done. Because of what... Jesus was victorious over here. Now you see a whole bunch of heroes in this world, and, and I don't use the term heroes lightly. There are people who are heroes in this world, and they're actively working to benefit other people, uh, helping them against sickness and disease, helping them against the frailty of their, their flesh, um, basically allowing them to live day by day. And even in the movies that we see, we see a whole bunch of heroes 
trying to win a victory over a lot of evil. But what Jesus Christ does here at the, in his resurrection is he claims a victory over the worst enemies that no one else in the world has ever been able to defeat. Because Jesus Christ, at his victory over death in the grave here in the resurrection, defeated sin, death, and the devil. I know that uh, this might seem a little, again, a little empty in the sense that we don't have a visual enemy that we can say, oh yes, Christ triumphed over that. But if you ever think about, well, have, have you been victorious over sin? Have you been able to go your entire life without doing something wrong, doing an evil, saying a bad at words, uh, speaking a lie? hating your neighbor, or maybe even looking at somebody in a way that you definitely shouldn't be looking. Are you perfect? Have you been perfect? And the answer is no. You've been defeated by sin. You were a slave to sin. And because you were a slave to sin, you were a slave to the consequence of what happens from sin, because all those who sin die. But Jesus Christ does here at the grave is rescue us in the greatest victory ever known to anyone in the entire universe, past, present, and future. Because Jesus Christ saves us from something we were never able to save ourselves from. He saves us from our sin, from death, and from the temptation of the devil. And he didn't do this by kicking down a stone slab or have explosions or punch out bad guys. He did this by humbly taking on your sin at the cross and dying in your place so that you might have everlasting life in him. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending Jesus Christ, your Son, into this world so that he might take my sins upon himself and save me from sin, death, and the devil, that I might have everlasting life in him. In his name we pray. Amen. Contemplating Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection, and the consequences of sin and death, we go forth singing our hymn of the day, Who Are You Who Walk in Sorrow?
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you in the name of God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who won us a victory today on Easter. Throughout the season of Lent, I was looking at various paradoxes in the readings we had each Sunday. Since a paradox is something that appears to be self-contradictory but is actually true, basically what I was doing was showing how the things in the readings that appear to be contradictory are not actually contradicting themselves. For this Easter Sunday, we will be having our final look at the paradoxes with a curious expression from the prophet Isaiah. In our reading from this morning, he says, God will swallow up death forever. This is a certainly a blessed promise made to us that death will one day no longer exist. But where is the contradiction? Well, it actually lies in what the Lord does when he swallows death. It is not that God is eating death for breakfast, as we might say, but that the Lord is destroying death, or, if you will, that our Lord is causing the death of death. Death dying does sound odd. I mean, how can death actually die? And on that note, this is what we're going to be looking at this morning. So I, Isaiah describes death as a covering cast over all people and all nations. There has never been a culture or people group who has not known death. Death is so ingrained in our world that people accept it as something natural and inevitable, something incredibly familiar, although it is feared. Death is incredibly familiar to us as well. This was the initial panic surrounding the coronavirus. People were frightened that this disease would cause all manner of death among us. And this concern remains among us as our provincial government maintains its restrictions over leisure activities and religious services. We felt our culture's fear of sickness and death when the possibility of indoor services for Easter were suddenly cancelled earlier this week. All of this being done to try to restrict exposure of people to a deadly virus. Of course, we can be thankful that the recovery rate for COVID-19 is high, but that does not change the fact that we still mourn the loss of those who have perished from this disease. And we mourn in this congregation as well, but not necessarily because of COVID-related deaths. Very recently, two members of our congregation have passed away, Stan Lind and Ella Campbell. Both of these people came into our congregation and found brothers and sisters in Christ among us. So at the passing of these loved ones, we as their brothers and sisters in Christ experience the darkness of death which covers the world. It is not pleasant it is destructive. And our Lord was quite aware of the looming destruction over all of humanity, threatening to claim every last soul on earth because of their sins. And with such a threat to our health and safety, how could our loving Lord not take action on your behalf? When Jesus entered into the world, it was not as though he was coming for the sole purpose of solving moral dilemmas or preaching love and togetherness. Some people wish to paint Jesus in that light, that the light of a moralist and a pacifist. But this truly denies who Christ is for all of us. Jesus is our Savior who delivers us from death. He did not come into this world to merely teach us to act rightly and love one another, although these things he did do. Jesus came from heaven to earth to destroy death and break the power of sin. Jesus came to deliver us from the worst enemies 
humanity has ever faced. Sin, death, and the devil. Jesus knows the hold death had over you and the fear that it can bring. He lived alongside us when he came into human flesh, and he knew the horrors of death and the pain that it causes to those who love people who have died. Days before Jesus entered into Jerusalem in the triumphal entry, days before he came into Jerusalem to die for us, he came into the town of Bethany, where a good friend of his, Lazarus, had passed away. Lazarus was taken into death by sickness. So when Jesus entered into Bethany, he entered into the sounds of weeping and mourning. Lazarus' sisters were deeply sorrowed. Their brother, whom they loved, lay dead and buried. It was not as though the sisters did not have hope in the resurrection on the last day. They even said that that was their true hope to see Lazarus again. But they were sorely saddened because someone they loved was now far from them. Did Jesus dismiss their tears to say Lazarus is in a better place or that death isn't that bad? No. Jesus Christ broke down with tears by their sides in full acknowledgement that death is a horrible thing to suffer through, both for the deceased and the survivors. Our Lord knows that we should not ignore death, but that he must save us from death. We should not shy away from the fact that death is the worst perversion of what the Lord has created, because our Lord has created life. Death destroys life, therefore death is the greatest enemy to, to God's creation. Taking away life is the last thing our Lord wishes to do, and he absolutely takes no pleasure in it. He wants us, who are threatened with death, to live. And he enlivens us through himself so that we do not need to experience the sorrow of death eternally. When Lazarus's weeping sisters come before Jesus, our Lord weeps alongside them in their pain, then provides the true comfort for death himself. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in him, though they die, yet shall they live. And everyone who lives and believes in Christ shall never truly die. Jesus goes to the tomb of Lazarus and gives to Lazarus life through his word. He calls out to Lazarus and raises Lazarus to life with that word spoken to the dead man. Lazarus rose from the dead and walked out of the tomb in the brightness of day and held his family in his arms once more. Jesus is the life which coursed through Lazarus' veins, and Jesus is the resurrection which destroys the evil of death that covered that man. In thinking towards our own family, our friends, and our neighbors who have perished, we take comfort in knowing they rest from their labors. But the ultimate source of comfort, which can lift our hearts from mourning, is Jesus Christ himself and the life which he pours out for us. Those who have died in the faith are not truly dead, but reside in the Lord. On the last day, our Lord will call them from their tombs, as he did to Lazarus, and they will walk out from their graves in the fullness of their flesh. In resurrected bodies, the sicknesses and ills that once afflicted their flesh will no longer hang over them, for the effects of sin and death will no longer be attached to, your, to their bodies. In Christ is new life, and in his resurrection, is the perfection of our flesh. This is the hope and promise we enjoy in the word of Jesus Christ, and we know through the word of Jesus we have life. The word Jesus spoke to Lazarus raised him from death, and the word Jesus delivers to you through the scriptures 
has raised you from the deadness of sin. Whatever evils befall you in this world, whatever threat of death comes your way, the word of Jesus Christ rests upon you so that when he calls your name into his everlasting kingdom on the last day, nothing will stop you from walking through every evil to reach him. Not even the evil of death can hold you back. This was the hope and promise shouted aloud by the crowd as Jesus entered into Jerusalem in the triumphal entry on Palm Sunday. The people who knew Lazarus were proclaiming the good news of Jesus being the resurrection and the life, who had cast off the veil of death that hangs over the world. The people were not simply cheering on an earthly king to take a worldly throne. The people were lauding and magnifying the source of all life in this world, taking his rightful seat on the cross to rid the world of sin and death. They were overjoyed that Jesus is bringing all people life. It is this life of Jesus which is offered up on the cross on Good Friday. Jesus plunged his life into death when he died upon the cross and death itself could not take it. The strength of the life of Jesus Christ, your Lord, was so holy and perfect that not even death could claim it. This is the resurrection, that death is completely overcome when the life of Christ enters into death. All of you who have your hopes in the resurrection will find that the life Christ speaks into you overcomes the shadow of death that clings to your flesh because of your sin. Death that tries to swallow you whole will have its mouth ripped open and Christ delivers you from this, these jaws of death and places you in the blessedness of his life. Death is completely overcome by the life Christ places within you. In fact, the life of Christ is so powerful that it kills death. The death of death is when death is overcome by life. Bodily functions no longer shut down and cease, but are renewed. Spirits are no longer given up, but placed back in bodies of flesh and blood. The evil of death is reversed in the coming resurrection of the dead. You will live even though you die. And the light of Christ's life shines within you and casts out the darkness of death as a bright light dispels all darkness around it. The nothingness of death lies no more to claim you, but is overcome by Jesus. Death itself dies, and all that is left is life. The paradox, the seeming contradiction, of the death of death is resolved in the resurrection. In the death of Christ, death itself is overcome and ended in life. Jesus swallows up death forever and wipes away the tears from all faces because the Lord takes away the threat of death from all people, now and forevermore, through the life of Christ. Does this mean that we need not mourn death? Or that the threat of death is nothing? No, certainly not. If death were nothing at all, then Christ would have never mourned alongside Lazarus' sisters over his death. The sorrow and pain of death are very real. And Christ knows this. He lived in this sorrow himself when he came alongside everyone who mourned before he raised those people up from death. He also lived through the sorrow of his own death when he himself took our place upon the cross. Christ went through death itself. He knows the curse of our mortality and its accompanying fear. He took on our death on the cross and knows the exact dread we all know. We do not have a Savior who is far from our thoughts and hearts. We have a Savior who knows every tinge of terror as we think how our lives can come to an end in this world. 
Christ knows the full weight of the veil of death that hangs over you, over the world. And he lifted that veil of death from you in the resurrection. Death is truly frightening. It is the last enemy that we will ever face. But Christ still stands victorious over death. His life overcame death in his resurrection, and this life he gives to you through his word in Scripture. Christ gives to you his own life so that his life will overcome your death. You and all the faithful will walk out of your graves and meet him when he calls for you. You will see the Lord with your own eyes of flesh, eyes no longer dulled with age, nor destroyed in rot. You will see the Lord face to face in the resurrection as his life raises you from death. The empty tomb on Easter morning is a promise made to you that your tomb will also be empty in the resurrection. The death that hangs over you will die and all that will be left for you is the life Christ placed on you in his word. For now, you can mourn the deaths of those who cherish and know the anxiety of death may prick your heart from time to time. But you have the ever-living promise given to you that everyone in the faith will rise from their graves and leave their tombs. Your death is swallowed up in the death of Christ, and the Lord will wipe away every tear from your eye. Amen. The peace that surpasses all understanding, God, your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue in prayer. Almighty God, we give thanks for all your goodness and bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful and just people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that you have done for us, Enable us to show our thankfulness in lives that are wholly given to your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Save and defend your whole church, purchased with the precious blood of Christ. Strengthen your faithful people through the word and the holy sacraments, making them perfect in love and in all good works, and establishing in them the faith once delivered to the saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send your light of truth into all the earth. Raise up faithful servants of Christ to advance the gospel both at home and in distant lands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve our nation in justice and honor, that we may lead a peaceful life with integrity. Grant health and favor to all who bear office in our land, especially Her Majesty the Queen, the Governor General, the Prime Minister in the Parliament, the government of this province, and all who have authority over us. Help them to serve this people according to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity, especially Chris, Margaret, Hildegard, Gail, Judith, Erica, Evelyn, Alma, Jean, Bruce, Laura, David, Richard, Martina, Linnea, and Wilfred. Be with those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. 
bring consolation to those in sorrow, especially the family and friends of Stan Lind and the family and friends of Ella Campbell. Grant to all a measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Amen. prayer. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you in your church on earth, who now rest from their labors, especially, especially Ella Campbell. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints, and bring us at last to the joys of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us grace to trust you during this time of illness and distress. In mercy, put an end to the pandemic which afflicts us. Grant relief to those who suffer and comfort all who mourn. Sustain all medical personnel in their labors and cause your people ever to serve you in righteousness and holiness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Trusting in our Lord's promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. 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 As of the first announcement, again, apologies for not realizing that uh, the camera was not streaming. Uh, I hope that you can at least watch this in recording and that uh, it wouldn't be as disconnected. But uh, thank you for joining us this morning and worshiping in this morning, uh, being able to celebrate the Lord's resurrection with us today. Uh, as I mentioned before, our sister in Christ, Ella Campbell, has passed away this past week. I have not yet received word about any um, funeral or memorial arrangements, but I will keep the congregation posted as these things uh, come up. Oh, and something that I haven't been doing, but I really should be doing, a thank you to all our musicians this morning, especially you, Andrew, who had suffered through so much with your mouth recently playing the trumpet. <laughs> um, and we continue enjoying this wonderful music as we conclude with our hymn, I Know That My Redeemer Lives.
He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.